Hi everyone, this is Hoag Smith with Nuix, and in this short video I'd like to show you how Nuix Adaptive Security can be used to respond to and act on threat intelligence. And in the um, demo here, what I wanted to use is a piece of threat intel that a colleague recently highlighted for me, which came out from CISA, and it's about Russian APT activity against state, local, tribal, and territorial organizations. And the threat intel talks a little bit about the tactics and techniques that are being used at a high level and then goes into some detail around the fact that Turkish IP addresses specifically are being used, that there's a number of domains that um, this APT is hosting to use for its attacks, that they're scanning for um, some vulnerabilities, particularly around Citrix and Microsoft Exchange. And then um, as we go on down through that, there's a, a list of IP addresses and list of domains that um, have been observed so far. And then some guidance around checking for um, the use of suspicious use of the SMB, um, uh, SMB protocol and in order really to detect um, credential harvesting. So what I'd like to show you is how uh, Nuix Adaptive Security gives you a really um, wide range of tools to detect and respond to this threat intelligence. And that includes both um, a backwards look for the IOCs that are called out in the reporting and um, to do uh, threat detection going forward so that in the future any of these IOCs that we're able to find create alerts. So let's do the backwards look first. So um, we saw that there are Turkish domains. So I have got here um, a block of data forwarded, um, namespace event data that's been forwarded back to my server. And I wanna look for any queries out to um, the .tr TLD. Now the easiest way to do that um, with a small data set like this is just to group my events and to show, you know, um, quickly center up on what my top level domains are in this data set. And you can see there are a few that I created earlier um, from, uh, from with .tr uh, as the top level domain. And you can see for each one we're connecting that to the process and of course to the host and timestamp and to a user. So similarly with um, IP addresses, if we wanted to just do a search for uh, recent connections to any of these suspicious IP addresses that have been called out in the thread intel, we can run a search against uh, network data. So Adaptive's network data looks like this, uh, similar to the namespace in that we capture a process name and a process user, and then the local uh, address and port, the remote address and port, and then the amount of data that's been sent and received, and of course the host name. So to um, do a search in this, you can use the filter editor in an adaptive, and you might just do a search like this. Remote address starts with 213.74, since a couple of the IP addresses started with, the, with that. Um, don't have anything responsive to that in this data set, but that um, just kind of gives you an idea of the kind of searching that you're able to do and filtering that you're able to do with the network uh, event data. Now, of course, the valuable thing about this threat intel, though, is that we can use it to change our security posture, to enhance our security posture by detecting in real time um, any future event that makes use of this stuff. So um, if we do have domains, we can add those in. So there were things like MicrosoftOnline.host and .services and um, a few others that I've just added onto this list. The adaptive security rules logic makes it fairly easy just to sort of paste that kind of thing in. I've also added Nuix just to do um, for the purposes of the demo here. And then same thing with IP addresses. I've pasted those in, and the only thing that I've done to them is just to change the syntax around them so that they are understood by the adaptive security rules engine as IP addresses. And so once I have those um, into my logic rules, then now any future um, activity against those domains is going to um, trigger an alert. So if we go to uh, portal.newix.com, then uh, we should get a immediate alert. And the same with any of the other um, uh, domains that we have uh, identified there. Um, so uh, there's our, and here's our alert um, to the known command and control uh, DNS name. We actually have another one here too, indicating multiple DNS queries um, um, to a top level domain that we're interested in. And that's actually coming from 
the other um, browser tab here, which is hitting this um, ktb.gov.tr domain, and that's generating um, .tr DNS queries, which are in turn um, triggering that second, that other alert that we saw there. Um, so the other thing that we uh, that was called out in the threat intel, you'll, if you'll recall, is um, unpatched software. So in this case, it was uh, Citrix and MS Exchange. And I wanted to just show a comparative example, uh, a simple example using Notepad here. And I have Notepad running, um, an unpatched version of it uh, running on, on this machine here, and a patched version on, um, on this system. So when I watched, when I launched the patched version, the most recent um, version of Notepad, no alert is generated. And that's because Adaptive is only looking for a scenario in which there's a mismatch between the process name and its MD5 hash. Um, basically, we're just making use of the fact that when a piece of software gets updated, when an application gets updated, uh, usually its MD5, its, um, its MD5 hash will change. So when I run, in this case, uh, Notepad++, the adaptive agent is going to say it's going to check its MD5 hash, and when it sees that those don't match, it's going to flag this as a potentially older version of Notepad++. So what this does is give you the ability um, not just to act sort of on the threat side of the threat intelligence that we saw, but also on the vulnerability side to detect um, you know, potential vulnerabilities in the form of unpatched software. Now, the last thing that we'll um, look at in this, in this threat intel was just this recommendation to monitor SMB traffic. And again, the idea here is that the IP addresses and domains here are probably not going to last long, but suspicious use of SMB um, is likely to surface again with this particular threat actor. So in order to detect that, what we've done is created a rule that looks for suspicious SMB traffic, and we're simply looking for outbound connections on ports 139 or 445, and we don't want to see um, outbound connections to those ports, using those ports, um, when the destination IP address is an internal one. So if, the, uh, if basically the SMB activity is happening in, internal to our network, then we don't want an alert. But if it's external, then it gets interesting. And so um, to simulate that, I'll just run a telnet command here. And that'll just create a network connection um, to uh, the host laptop here on the SMB port and create, we should see, an alert in our adaptive console, if I can bring it up. And there's our outbound traffic to internet on SMB ports. So each of these things here was created in response to that particular piece of threat intel. And we could actually continue to you know, um, further explore this and look for you know, other ways to detect um, the behaviors that are called out here and the TTPs that are, that are identified and the vulnerabilities. But hopefully this gives you a sense of um, the art of the possible within adaptive. And you, know, you can kind of tell from the accessibility of this, uh, the rule logic here that you know, these are things, detections that um, can be created pretty much instantaneously in response to threat intelligence. So this gives you a very powerful means to um, make use of threat intelligence to change your security posture and respond in real time.